Hi, this is Jennifer with A Crocheted Simplicity, and in this video tutorial, I'm going to show you how to crochet my easy hooded crochet cowl. This is a beginner-friendly crochet pattern that uses basic stitches and working in front and back loops. It's worked from the bottom up, and we'll be working in joined and turned rows to achieve the textured stitch pattern that you see. After we have crocheted our cowl to the height needed, we will then work sideways and add a ribbed cuff. At the end of that, we'll join with a whip stitch seam and then fold the cuff down to wear. For this cowl, I used Knit Picks Wonder Fluff, which is a bulky weight number five yarn. It's a light and airy yarn that's classified as a bulky weight five yarn because of the halo that it has. For camera purposes, I'm going to use another bulky weight yarn because I find that the heathered yarns can sometimes be a little harder to show stitch definition and stitch placement on camera. So for your cowl, you'll need approximately 450 yarns of a bulky weight, an 8 millimeter crochet hook, a yarn needle, maybe a stitch marker. I'm going to show you how this can be helpful, and a pair of scissors. Go ahead and gather all your materials and I'll meet you back here and we'll start the body of our cowl. Okay, now that you've got your yarn and an 8mm crochet hook, we're going to begin. Start with a slip knot on your hook and then in the pattern it tells you to chain 72. I'm only going to chain 24 for this video tutorial. One, two, three, four, Now, the reason that I chained 24, or I chose that number, is because this stitch pattern, when taking the ribbed cuff into consideration, needs to be a stitch multiple of three. So if you have to adjust the width of your cowl, if you'd like your cowl a little wider, add stitches in increments of three, or add chains to your foundation chain, um, three stitches at a time. If you'd like to make it narrower, if your gauge is a little looser than mine, then subtract stitches three at a time. So after you get your foundation chain, we're going to join with a slip stitch to the first chain. Now some people get confused or have trouble with twisting their chain before joining. So I like to lay mine flat on the table with the ribbed edge up, the little ridges, and the loops down. And then bring around the first chain to the last one. Very carefully. Find that ridge, pick it up without twisting the other. Insert your hook into the ridge of that first chain. Yarn over, pull up a loop, and pull it through the loop on your hook. And there's your join with a slip stitch. So you'll have a ring. That's your setup. Now for round one, we're going to be working into the back hump of the chain. Tip your chain sideways so you can see the ridges that create the back hump. We're going to begin round one with a chain one, and then we're going to work a single crochet into each chain around. If you're one that has trouble going into your chains, then go up a stitch, go up a hook size. That'll help a lot. So at the end of round one, you should have 72 stitches, and I'm going to have 24.
Now the yarn that I'm using, it's a bulky weight, but it is not light and fluffy like Wonder Fluff is, so it's going to be a lot stiffer. So if I were using this to make my cowl, I would have gone up probably to a 12 millimeter hook just so that I had a nice drape to it. So just adjust your hook size if you use a different yarn than I did. You can easily adjust hook size and the number of stitches. In fact, some worsted weight yarns, some of them that are a little heavier, like an Aran yarn, they're, they'll work just fine as well. They would give you a nice drape too, same hook size. I worked up a swatch earlier with Lion Brand Woolies Worsted. Okay, now we got around my chain. This is not the last chain. That is your slip stitch that you created to that first chain. So here's the last chain, that's the 24th. And if you want to be sure, you can just count your stitches. And then join with a slip stitch to the first stitch. And that's round one. Now a tip here, because you're going to want to know which your right side and your wrong side is later, is to take a stitch marker or a scrap piece of yarn and attach it to the front of the work. Slide it in carefully. Now if you were to put it in the bottom, bottom of the stitches, that's not going to help because that just tells you where your bottom of your row is. But putting it into the front of the stitches will show you while you're working which side is your right side. Now for round two, we're going to chain one and single crochet in each stitch around. Pretty simple so far, isn't it? And again, we're back around to the end of the round. This right here is your slip stitch join, so we're not going to work into that. That was our last stitch. And again, we're going to join with a slip stitch to that first single crochet of the round. Now for round three, we're going to work half double crochets, and we're going to alternate working between the front loop and the back loop. So we're going to chain one. I'm going to zoom in just a little bit more. Our first half double crochet we're going to work in the front loop of the first stitch. So to find your front loop and your back loop, if you tip your work towards you so you can see the top of the stitches, the loop that is closest to you is always going to be your front loop and the loop that's furthest away is going to be your back loop. So working into this front loop right here, we're going to work a half double crochet, yarn over, insert your hook, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over and pull through all three loops on your hook. The next stitch we're going to work into the back loop, so that's this loop right here. We're going to yarn over, Insert your hook into the back loop, yarn over and pull up a loop, yarn over and pull through all three loops on your hook. And then we're just going to alternate that all the way around. So the next is our front loop. And then a half double crochet in the back loop, right here. and then a half double crochet in the front loop. And a half double crochet in the back loop. Half double crochet in the front loop. Half double crochet in the back loop. 
We're going to repeat that all the way around. So continue with round three until you get to the end of the round and then join with a slip stitch to your first half double crochet of the round. Now the last stitch of the round will be a half double crochet worked into the back loop. And now we're going to join with a slip stitch to the first stitch. Now before I go on, I'm going to show you another little tip with a stitch marker. Because we're going to be working in joined and turned rows, which that means we complete one round one way, we're going to join and then turn and work in the opposite direction for the next round, join and turn, work in the first direction, and so on and so forth. Now the reason that I chose to do this is because of the stitch pattern that it creates. It creates a really nice texture when we do this. But sometimes you get confused with where that first stitch of the round is after we turn because you have the slip stitch here and sometimes people end up working into the slip stitch join and adding more stitches to the rounds. So one tip I can give you is when you complete the round place a stitch marker you don't have to lock it into the last stitch that you worked for that round. You can do it before or after you join as long as you know that where that last stitch is. So now After I've got my stitch marker in there, I'm going to chain one and turn to work round four. Now here you can see, after I've turned, this is my chain, a turning chain. That's the slip stitch join, and here is my first stitch. So this is where we're going to be working our first stitches into. Now for round four, it's a reverse of round three, so you're going to work the first stitch in the back loop only. So we're going to work into this loop right here. You can add that stitch marker back if you need to. So we're going to work a half double crochet into the back loop of the first stitch. And then a half double crochet into the front loop of the next stitch. then a half double crochet into the back loop of the next stitch and a half double crochet into the front loop of the next stitch. Now with a half double crochet stitch they have three loops. They have the two top loops and then there's a third back loop. So when you're working the next round make sure you tip your work so that the top edge of your stitches, the top of your stitches are facing you. If they're facing you this way, this is the side of the stitch and this is that third loop you want to work in the top loops, so the front and the back loops, not this third loop. So continue working a half double crochet into the back loop of the next stitch, followed by a half double crochet into the front loop of the next stitch. And you're going to repeat that around to the end of the round and join with a slip stitch to that first stitch of the round. So go ahead and complete your round four. Now again, now that we're at the end of the round, one last stitch worked in the front loop only of the last stitch. And 
and we're going to join with a slip stitch to our first stitch. And before we turn, we're going to place a stitch marker in that last half double crochet that we worked. Right here. We're going to chain one and turn. And then the remainder of the cowl is just repeating rounds three and four. So, we're going to work for a round three repeat. Round three is worked on the right side, which is where your stitch marker is. So if you ever lose track of where you're at, place that stitch marker on the front the first row on the right side it's an easy way to keep track so round three is worked half double crochet in the front loop of the first stitch there's our first stitch so we've got half double crochet in the front loop followed by a half double crochet in the back loop Remember to turn your, t your work so that the top of the stitches are facing you so you can see those loops better. So you're not working into that third loop. And repeat the stitch pattern around. So you have half double crochet in the front loop, or the, the front loop only, and then half double crochet in the back loop only. You're gonna repeat that around and end with a half double crochet in the back loop only. And we're going to join with a slip stitch to that first half double crochet of the round. And place a stitch marker in that last stitch if you need to. Chain one and turn. And we're going to repeat round four. I'm going to repeat this one more round of round four. And then I'm going to let you go until you complete the cowl. Now if you want a hooded cowl, continue to repeat rounds three and four until your cowl measures approximately 23 inches. If you'd like a shorter cowl, you can stop wherever you'd like. So for round four, we half double crochet in the back loop, followed by a half double crochet in the front loop. Half double crochet in the back loop, half double crochet in the front loop. And we're gonna end this round with a half double crochet in the front loop only, and then join with a slip stitch. After you've completed a couple rounds of your cowl, you can put it around your neck and see if it's going to be wide enough for you. Sometimes you can get a pretty good idea or compare it to one you already have that you like the size of. This is a standard 30 inch um, circumference cowl. So it should be comfortable for most people, but I know some like a little looser. So if that's the case, then you could frog and start over and add at least three more chains to make your cowl a little looser or subtract chains if you want it to be a little tighter. So I've completed round four and you can see the textured stitches, the, the stitch pattern coming out. So go ahead and complete your cowl until it's 23 inches or the height that you desire and then meet me back here and we will prepare the top edge of our cowl for the cuff and then work the rib cuff.
after you've completed the body of your cowl or the main portion of your cowl, you should have ended with a round four. At the end of that round four, turn so that you're on the right side. So we're gonna work the edging on the right side. So we chain one, make sure we're on the right side, and then now in this round we just work a single crochet in the front loop and a single crochet in the back loop. It's similar to what we were doing for the cowl. So work a single crochet in the front loop, single crochet in the back loop, Repeat that around your cowl and then join with a slip stitch to the first stitch. Join with a slip stitch to the first stitch. And now we're going to work the ribbed cuff. So the ribbed cuff, we're going to chain and then we're going to work rows that are perpendicular to the top edge of our cowl. It may sound a little confusing or a little tricky, but it's actually pretty easy. Okay, so row one of our ribbed cuff says to chain 11. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 11. Just like how we worked the first round, we're gonna work into the back humps of our chain. beginning into the second chain from our hook, we're going to work a half double crochet into the second chain. Now we're going to work a half double crochet into each of the next eight chains. So you should have nine half double crochet. And now we're going to work a half double crochet two together to join this last chain and the stitch in the top edge of the cowl. So yarn over, insert your hook into the back hump of that next chain, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, insert your hook into that same stitch as the chain 11, yarn over, pull up a loop, Turn over, pull through all loops on your hook. Now if that stitch becomes too bulky for you, you can om omit one of the yarn overs. So I like to yarn over, insert my hook into that back loop of that last chain, yarn over, pull up a loop, and instead of yarn over, yarning over again, I insert my hook into the stitch. Then yarn over, pull up a loop, then yarn over and pull through all loops on your hook makes that joining stitch just a little thinner, a little less bulky. So now we're not going to turn. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to work row two. In the beginning of row two it says to slip stitch into the next stitch along the edge of the cowl. So you're going to slip stitch into the next stitch along the edge of the cowl 
and you're going to do that two times. So you're going to slip stitch in this stitch and you're going to slip stitch in this next stitch. Neither of these slip stitches is going to count as a stitch. They act as a chain like we're working a new row if we were working back and forth in rows without joining. So we have a slip stitch into each of the next two stitches. Now we're going to turn but before I do that, I'm going to use a stitch marker again just to help with the visual. So then the next, in row two, we're going to work in the back loop only of the stitches. So before you turn, place your stitch marker into the front loop of the last of that half double crochet two together. Because when we turn, that front loop then becomes our back loop. That way you'll easy, you'll, it'll be easier to see your stitches. So place your stitch marker in the front loop only of that half double crochet two together, then turn, and now you can see here's that one of the slip stitches, here's another slip stitch. This is where we need to work our first stitch. So to complete row two, we're going to work a back loop only half double crochet into each stitch across the previous row, beginning with this stitch here. Now you can see the purpose of those two slip stitches. It was giving me the height I needed to complete that next row. If I would have only slip stitched once, then it would have been um, really narrow here and my ribbed cuff would have flared out on me. It wouldn't have laid nice. So work a half double crochet in the back loop of each stitch across from the previous row. Now when you get to the end of the row, if you like using the stitch marker, place the stitch marker again in the front loop only of that last stitch. That'll show you where you need to work the first stitch of the next row. We're going to chain one and turn at the end of row two. And you can see that this is the back loop only of our stitch after we turn. That's where we work the first half double crochet of row three. So work a half double crochet into the back loop only of the first stitch. Then work a half double crochet into the back loop only of each of the next eight stitches. So you'll have nine half double crochets. Three. Four. Five. Six, seven, eight, and nine. And then to end row three, we're going to work another half double crochet two together in the last, the last stitch and the next stitch along the edge of our cowl. We're going to begin by yarning over, inserting your hook into the back loop only of that last stitch. Yarn over, pull up a loop, insert your hook into the next stitch along the edge. Not the same stitch that you worked a slip stitch in, it's the next stitch that there's no stitches worked into. And yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through all loops to complete that stitch. That's the end of row three. So to begin row four, it's just a repeat of row two. We're going to work a slip stitch in each of the next two stitches along the top edge of the cowl. So a slip stitch in this stitch, then slip stitch in this stitch. Go ahead and place a stitch marker in the front loop only of that half double crochet two together if you need to. And then turn. Now we're going to work a half double crochet into the back loops of each stitch from the previous row, beginning with this stitch right here. So back loop only, half double crochet in each stitch across.
and that's it. So you complete the ribbing, you just repeat rows three and four around the entire top edge of your cowl. So go ahead and complete your ribbing and then I'll meet you back here and we'll whip stitch the first row to the last row. Now that you've completed the ribbing all the way around the top edge of your cowl, go ahead and fasten off and leave a length of yarn that is approximately three times the length or the width of the seam. Then with a yarn needle, we're going to line up the first and last row of stitches. And whip stitch them together. So go ahead and finish whip stitching your seam together and then when you're done you can fold your cuff down and wear your cowl. Now as you can see this is a lot more stiff than the yarn, the Wonder Fluff yarn. The Wonder Fluff yarn was really nice and airy and it felt great on when I had to take pictures. And it was warm. Even though it was lighter and it was airier, it was very warm because I had all of this bunched up around my neck. So I'm not sure that I would use a heavier or thicker, more dense bulky yarn unless I went up at least to a 12 millimeter hook. But I would use a worsted weight yarn and use an 8 millimeter hook. I hope that you have successfully crocheted your easy hooded crochet cowl and you've enjoyed this video tutorial. If you have, make sure to subscribe to my channel if you're not already and visit my blog at www.acrochetedsimplicity.com where you'll find all sorts of other free crochet patterns. If you need assistance, you can use the contact form on my blog or email me at acrochetedsimplicity at gmail.com. I hope to see you back here again soon. Thanks and have a great day.